friends, welcome to another business studies class. Today we'll be looking at a topic, introduction to commerce. Introduction to commerce. In our previous video, we looked at the introductory aspects of business studies in which we're able to identify the component parts of business studies. We identified five component parts of business studies and one of them is commerce. So today we'll be looking at the introductory aspects of commerce. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to define commerce, state the importance of commerce, then we'll identify the divisions of commerce or trade, then explain the types of trade. So let's start by defining the term commerce. Commerce, as I said, is one of the component parts of the business environment. It is very important in the sense that this is the aspect that encourages the buying and selling of goods and services. So commerce can basically be defined as any activity which encourages the buying and selling of goods and services. Or we can also define commerce as the exchange or distribution of goods and services geared at facilitating trade. The goods and services, these goods and services are either exchanged or distributed. So, in other words, there are three basic things that come together to form commerce. Three activities which are buying, selling, and distribution. So if I want to broaden the, the definition of commerce, I can simply say that commerce can be defined as the buying, selling, and distribution of goods and services. Because the word exchange here talks about the buying and selling of goods and services, which we all know, know as trade. You exchange goods for money. But before this buying and selling can take place, these goods must first of all be distributed from the producer to the sellers, either to the wholesalers or to the retailers. So bringing everything together forms commerce. Let's look at the importance of commerce. Why is commerce important in the economy of a nation? Number one, commerce connects producers, sellers, and consumers. Commerce cannot be complete, first of all, without producers. In fact, it can't be possible without the producers producing goods and services, moving it to the sellers, then before the goods can get to the consumers. So it is the activity of commerce that brings these three people together. The producers produce, they move it to the sellers through distribution, then the sellers pass it to the final consumers. So commerce connects the producers, sellers, and consumers. Another importance of commerce is it encourages international trade. Remember I said one of the vital activities carried out in commerce is distribution. How are goods which are produced in other countries made available in Nigeria, for instance? It is through commerce, through the distribution of the goods. The goods are effectively moved from other countries like China, Italy, Japan, UK, US. They are moved into Nigeria. So commerce encourages international trade. That means buying and selling from between two or more countries. Another thing we benefit from commerce is commerce improves our standard of living. The reason why most of us are happy is because we have everything we need around us. And all these things are made available through commerce. 
So commerce helps to provide us with all the things we need for us to be able to live a better life. Provision of good facilities like good roads, good communication, good transport system, banking system, all these things are made available through commerce. So you can see that commerce improves our standard of living. It also enhances the development of a good banking system. The major source of income in the banking system today is through commerce, buying and selling. So it enhances good banking system because there is inflow and outflow of cash. Sellers are able to have access to the banking sector. Buyers also have access to the banking sector. Producers also have access to fund in the banking sector. So it enhances the development of a good banking system. Commerce also helps in the reduction of unemployment. This we are going to see as we proceed into the lesson because there are different, there are, we have so many divisions of commerce, transportation, communication, warehousing, banking, selling, buying, all these are different aspects of commerce. So you see all the people working in these areas, they have been, they are what? They are employed. So commerce reduces on employment. You see some people, after they have walked around the country looking for jobs in companies, in, in um, private establishments, you see them at the end of the day, looking for money to trade. So it's a means of employment. And lastly, commerce boosts the national income and wealth of a nation. Commerce helps in boosting the income and wealth of a nation. You see everybody running to Dubai today. You see everybody running to China. It is because of the commercial activities going on in such country. And as these activities are going on, automatically it increases the income and wealth of such a nation because buying and selling activities take place. So the money, the wealth from other countries come into such a country because of the nature of the commercial or economic activities going on in such a country. So commerce helps to boost the national and the national income and wealth of a nation. So you can see that commerce is not a one-sided thing. It's something that you and I can benefit from, and not just you and I, the entire country can also benefit from commerce. Let's go into the divisions or branches of commerce. Commerce can be divided into two major parts. We have the trade and the is to trade. Commerce, I repeat, can be divided into two divisions, into two parts. Namely, trade and aid to trade. The trade aspect can also be divided into two. Namely, the home trade and the foreign trade. While the second aspect or the second division of commerce, or you can also say the second branch of commerce, can also be divided into seven parts. So let's, in today's lesson, we'll be focusing on the trade aspects, which can be divided, divided into the home trade and the foreign trade. Like I've said through the, uh, from the diagram, there are two major divisions of commerce, namely trade and is to trade. So let's take them one after the other. Let's start with trade. Trade can simply be defined as the buying and selling of goods and services. There are two major activities carried out in trade, buying and selling, which we can also refer to as exchange. Trade involves the exchange of goods and services, basically for money. And we have two divisions of trade, namely the home trade and the foreign trade. The home trade and the foreign trade. You can see it from the, from the diagram. Trade can be divided into home trade and foreign trade. 
Now, furthermore, the, the home trade can also be divided into two. Wholesale trade and the retail trade. While the foreign trade can also be divided into three aspects. The import trade, export trade, and the entreport trade. We'll be looking at each of each division one after the other. So for the purpose of exam, you can be asked, with the aid of diagram, explain trade. This is what is expected of you. With the aid of diagram or with illustration, explain trade. This is what is expected of you. Trade can be divided into two. You have the home trade and the foreign trade. Then you further classify trade in, uh, classify home trade into two again, the wholesale trade and the retail. Then you divide your foreign trade into three, import trade, export trade, and the export trade. So let's take them one after the other and get the explanation. Let's start with home trade. I've already defined trade as the buying and selling of goods and services. So what do we refer to as home trade? Home trade is not selling in your home or selling in your house. No. Home trade can be defined as the buying and selling of goods and services within a particular country or within a geographical area. The buying and selling of goods and services within a particular country, for example, within Nigeria, is referred to as home trade. Buying and selling activities carried out within a geogra geographical uh, 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 area, but it must not exceed the boundary of a particular country. And you can also call, you can also refer to your home trade as internal trade or domestic trade. For exam purpose, you can also be asked this. The home trade can also be referred to as dash. So you can also name it internal trade or domestic trade. The buying and selling of goods and services within a particular country. It can be from one state to another. It can be from one town to another. It can be from one city to another. It can be from one geographical area to another. But it must not exceed the boundary of a country. Own trade can be classified into two. Like I've said before now, it can also be referred to as domestic trade. Home trade, there are two types of home trade. You have the wholesale trade and the retail trade. The home trade comprises of wholesale trade and retail trade. So what do we understand by wholesale trade? What do we understand by the retail trade? Wholesale trade involves the buying of goods in large quantities from the producers or the manufacturers for resale in smaller quantities to the retailers. Wholesaling can simply be defined as the buying of goods in large quantity, or you can say in bulk, from the producers, then selling in smaller quantity to the retailers. So anyone who engages in wholesale trade is referred to as a wholesaler. The wholesaler is the person involved in wholesale, in the wholesale trade. That means someone who has access to the producers. They buy in large quantities from the producers or the manufacturers and sell in smaller quantities to the retailers. While the retail trade, is, it involves the buying of goods in smaller lots or smaller quantities from the wholesalers, as I've explained, they're selling in units or bits to the consumers. And these consumers, they are referred to as the last link in the distribution channel. The retailers, they are, people that are, involved, they are, they are the people that are involved in retail trade. They buy in small quantities from the wholesalers. Remember, the wholesalers buy from the producers. But the retailers don't have access to the, wholesale, to the producers. They don't have the financial capability to buy from the producers. So they now buy from wholesalers who are able to sell in smaller lots, who are able to sell, in, uh, sell smaller lots to them. 
they now sell in bits or units to the consumers. The retailers can also be referred to as bulk breakers. There are people that break box, they, they, box. There are people that open cartons and they sell in units or bits to the final consumers. Remember that the consumers, they are the end users of products. They are the final, they are the users of products produced or manufactured, made by the producer. So these are the two divisions of home trade, the wholesale trade and the retail trade. Now let's move to the second division of trade, which is the foreign trade. We have looked at home trade, remember, buying and selling of goods and services within a country or within a geographical area. The opposite now is foreign trade. Foreign trade now is defined as the buying and selling of goods between two or more countries. Between two or more countries. This one now is no longer limited to just one country. It is a type of trade that involves encroaching into the boundary of another country, buying and selling between not just two countries, you can even see more, three or more countries involved in foreign trade or involved in trade. This is referred to as foreign trade. And another name for foreign trade is international trade. Foreign trade can also be referred to as international trade. Foreign trade can be divided into three, import, export, and entropot. The three divisions of foreign trade are import, export, and entropot. So let's take them one after the other. Import. Import refers to the process of bringing in goods from one country into another country. I said import can be referred to the process of buying or bringing in goods from another country into your own country. Most countries have excess goods. Most countries pro produce goods in excess. What do they do? They sell it to other countries. So you bringing in the excess goods of some countries into your own country is referred to as import. Or some people call it, the process is called importation. We have so many imported goods in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we import processed food, we import equipment, we import cars, we import machineries, we import so many things. So the act of you bringing in goods, in, bringing in goods from other countries into your own country is referred to as import. And like I said, the process is called importation. So many people in Nigeria are involved in importation of goods. So which means automatically they are involved in foreign trade. The second division of foreign trade is export, which is now the opposite of import. Export now is the sending out or the selling out of the excess goods of a particular country to other countries. Like I said, it's the opposite of import. Import is bringing in goods from other countries into your own country, while export is selling out or sending out the excess goods in your own country to other countries. Remember, it is what you have in excess that you can send out to other places. So the process of you sending out, sending out or selling out goods and services from your own country, which is your home country, to other countries is referred to as export. In Nigeria, the main export commodity in Nigeria is crude oil. We have some other export commodities too. We have cocoa, we have uh, rubber, tin, and so on. But the major export commodity in Nigeria is crude oil. The third division of foreign trade is entropot, not enterpot. So many people call it enterpot. It's entropot. Entropot. 
Entry port as a division of foreign trade is a combination of importation and exportation. Now, let me make this clear. Remember that in the definition of foreign trade, I said it is the buying and selling of goods and services between two or more countries. If you look at the definition of imports, it is just between two countries. Your own country, another country bringing in goods into your own country. One export is you selling out goods to other countries, which is also between two countries. But entropot now is between two or more. It's not just limited to two countries. So that's why I said it's a combination of import and export. So how can we explain entropot? Entropot simply means the buying of goods from one country, which is importation, and selling it to another country. That's why I said it's a combination of import and export. That means goods are first of all brought from another country into your own country, then you now do what? Export it to another country. You can also say it is the re-exporting of an already imported good. Let me give an example. In Nigeria, well, let me say this, we do not majorly produce cars or some machines. Now, let's say I'm an importer and I import cars from China. And someone calls me from Ghana or from um, a neighboring African country to export cars to him or her. Remember that in Nigeria, we do not majorly produce cars. So which means, um, first of all, I will first of all import the goods from China into Nigeria before I now do what? Sell it out or export it to Ghana. So that is what we mean by entropot. And that's why I said it's a combination of importation and exportation. So you can see now that entropot now is not just between two countries. It's now among three countries. Like the example I gave, China to Nigeria, then to Ghana. So it is re-exporting an already imported good. So these are the three divisions of foreign trade. So this is what we have. This is just the part one of this introduction to commerce, which is the trade aspect. So let's quickly take a quick recap of what we have learned. We started by looking at the definition of commerce. And I defined commerce as those activities involved in the distribution and the exchange of goods and services. And I said commerce can be divided into two. There are two branches or two classifications of commerce, namely trade and as to trade. We further, in today's class, we looked at the trade aspects, which can be classified into two again, the home trade and the foreign trade. And I define home trade as the buying and selling of goods and services within a country or within a geographical area. I said it can be from one state to another, from one city to another, but it must not exceed the boundary of a particular country, let's say Nigeria. And I said home trade can further be classified into two, namely wholesale trade and retail trade. And I explained wholesale trade as the buying of goods in large quantities from producers, buying in bulk or large quantities from producers and selling in smaller quantities to the retailers. While I said the retail trade involves buying of goods in smaller quantities from the wholesalers and selling in units or bits to the final consumers who the consumers are the hand users of the products. We also looked at the second division of trade, which is the foreign trade. So the foreign trade can be subdivided into three, namely import, export, and entropot. And we define import as the bringing in of goods from one country into your own country. 
why we define export as the sending out or the selling out of goods from your own country into another country. Then I explained entroport, I said is a combination of importation and exportation. That means goods are first of all brought in from another country, then you now do what? Re-export it into another country. So in our next class, we are going to be looking at the second division of trade, sorry, of commerce, which is the aid to trade aspect. So I expect you to watch the video for the next class for a continuity of this particular topic. So before we go from my exam guide, let's take some questions. Let's take some questions. The first question I have here says, the two main divisions of commerce are, can you remember? The first one says, the home trade and the foreign trade, import and export trade, markets and business units, wholesale trade and retail trade, trade and aids to trade. The answer here is E trade and aids to trade. Remember I said commerce, the two major divisions of commerce are the trade and aids to trade. We have home trade and foreign trade are the divisions of trade. Why import trade and export trade are the divisions of foreign trade? So the two major divisions of commerce are trade and aids to trade. Another question says, the exchange of goods and services on a large scale explains dash. The exchange of goods and services on a large scale explains that dash. Is it production or commerce or finance or banking or insurance? The answer is commerce. Remember I told you that commerce is not just all about buying and selling. There are also some activities involved in commerce. And on that commerce, remember, we looked at wholesale trade, buying goods in large quantity on a large scale basis. So the answer here is commerce. Let's take another question. The next question says, the following are functions of a wholesaler, except that E dash. Remember, we looked at wholesale trade. So what's the major function the, uh, which one now is not a function of wholesale trade? A, sells goods in small quantity to the retailer. B, gives information about the market to the consumer. C, buys goods in large quantity from manufacturers. D, gives information about the market to the manufacturer. E, sells on credit to the retailer. So the answer here, looking at it critically, is option B. It says gives, they do not give information about the market to the consumer. It is not the duty of the wholesaler to give information to the consumer. It is the duty of the retailer to give information about the market situation to the consumer. But they sell goods in large quantity to retailers, which is one of their major functions. They buy goods in large quantity from manufacturers. They give information about the market to the manufacturers too. They give more or less like a feedback to the manufacturers. Then they can also sell on credit to the retailers. So the odd one out here is giving information to the consumers. Okay, with this we come to the end of today's class. Remember, this is just part one. So watch out for the second part.